So today we're going to start chapter four, section four, and we're going to learn how to complete the square in order to get our conic equations into standard form. I'm going to do at least an example of a parabola, an ellipse, and a hyperbola today. If I can do additional ones, I will. Um, whatever I do not cover today, I will continue on and do all 10 examples, um, finish it up tomorrow. So just to review the steps for completing the square, they're on the next slide. Now, when it's a hyperbola or an ellipse, um, not only will we have an x squared term, we'll also have perhaps an a equals y squared, and then we would have a by. So if that's the case, then we're gonna have both the x squared and the y squared term, and we're gonna leave all the x's and y's on the left side. The only thing we would move is the constant. And then if there's a number in front of your x squared or your y squared, remember we have to factor it out before we can start the completing the square process. To um, turn it into a perfect square trinomial, remember how we make the blank, blank space, we have to find that C term that goes in the blank space by taking the B term, dividing it by two and squaring it. That's what I'm gonna add to both sides. So we would add that term to the left and to the right because we wanna keep our equation balanced. Remember, if you factored anything out, you have to multiply it by that number you factored out before adding it to the right. Now, when we did the quiz, the video quiz that you guys did on completing the square, remember we, would, we never moved the constant to the other side of the equal sign, we just pushed it out. And we never added the same number, we added the opposite. Here's where it's different, because we're actually moving the constant to the other side of the equal sign, so this time we're actually going to add the same number to both sides then you would factor the perfect square trinomial. And then if you have to divide out so that it's not, um, so it's set equal to zero, we'll do that as well. I know this is a lot of words, um, but as you see the examples, it'll get it, um, it'll simplify it. So let's try some examples. Now, you may be given questions where they're just gonna say, put this equation in standard form, and they're not gonna tell you if you're gonna be putting it into standard form for a parabola, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. The key difference is, is if it's a parabola, you're only gonna have one variable that's squared. It's either gonna be an x squared or a y squared, not both. If it's an ellipse or a hyperbola, you'll have both, an x squared and a y squared. Remember the ellipse, the final equation has an addition sign in between and then the hyperbola has the subtraction sign. But we'll see that as we get to those examples. Notice this one only has a y squared, so this is going to be a parabola. So when it's a parabola, we're gonna move everything away from the variable that is squared. So, any, so notice the y is squared, so I'm gonna leave the y variables on the left side. I'm gonna move the constant and I'm gonna move the x variables to the other side. So final answer here, as after I've moved things around, y squared minus six y, leave a blank space, and then x minus three. In order to complete the square, I'm only completing the square for this left side, so I'm trying to fill in the blank space, Check to see if there's a number in front of y squared. There's not. So now I take the b term, which is negative 6, divide it by 2, and square it. Negative 3 squared is 9. This is what I'm going to essentially be adding to both sides. I'm going to add 9 here, and I'm going to add 9 here. But remember, when I completed the square before, remember, I don't put it in as plus 9, I'm gonna put it in here as a plus negative three to the second power because that's gonna help me when I go to factor 
that perfect square trinomial. So when I go to factor this left side, I end up with y minus 3 squared equals, and I need to now simplify the constants here, negative 3 plus 9, and I get positive 6. Now, this is in a form that we recognize. y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. So the 3 in this equation is my k. The 6, or this positive 6 here, this is my k. My 4p value, which is right here, Notice there's nothing there, so I assume it to be a 1. So let's go ahead and pull out our vertex, which is our H and K. So my vertex is going to be the ordered pair, negative 6, positive 3. That's the vertex. Now, the only new part of this lesson was right here. Everything that I'm doing right now is what you did on the quiz given this. So the only new part was turning it into that standard form. Everything I'm doing right now is what you quizzed on on Friday. Next thing I need to find is my p-value. Remember the p-value is the number in front of that non-squared parentheses. So for p equals 1 divide by 4, and my p-value is 1 fourth. Remember, the p-value is the distance that the vertex is from the focus, and it's also the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So to find my focus point, I take my center, or my vertex, I'm going to be adding p, to the non-squared variable. So I'm adding p here. So my focus point is going to be negative 6 plus 1 fourth comma 3. So this becomes negative 5 and 3 fourths comma 3. WebAssign may expect you to make it enter it improper. So you could also enter this as negative 23 over 4, comma 3. This is your focus point. And you can do it either way. Since I'm graphing this, for me it's easier to do a mixed number. I now need to find my directrix. My directrix is the opposite of P. So again, I'm taking my vertex which is negative 6, positive 3. The non-squared variable was the x, so it's going to be x equals negative 6 plus the opposite of p, which is negative 1 fourth. So my directrix is the equation negative 6 and 1 fourth. As an improper fraction, negative 25 over 4. Now, to graph the parabola, we also need to find an additional point to see how wide to make the graph. The easiest way, one to find when it's a parabola and the center or the vertex is not at 0, 0 is one of the intercepts. Remember, if it's a y-squared graph, it's going to be a c or a backward c. So then what I'm going to do here is find the x-intercept. Now, I can either choose to use the one I just created, but to find the intercepts, it's a lot easier to use the original. So I'm going to find my, my x-intercept by setting y equal to 0. So 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 3 equals x. This all becomes a 0, 
So x equals 3. So the x-intercept is the ordered pair 3 comma 0. This is going to be the x-intercept, which will also serve as an additional point. I'm going to use my axis of symmetry. And remember, we get that from the vertex. And my axis of symmetry is y equals 3. So now let's graph all of this. Again, this is everything that you did on the quiz on Friday. So let me go ahead and draw my axis here. I'm gonna graph the vertex. It's at negative six, one, two, three, four, five, six, positive three. I can graph my axis of symmetry going to be this line right here through the vertex. I can graph my focus point. It's the order pair negative 5 and 3 fourths. And it's going to be really close to this vertex. And then I can do the directrix. Which will be back here. I can graph my x-intercept, which is 3 comma 0. So my parabola is looking like this. I can also go three spaces. So if, since this is three spaces away from the axis of symmetry, I can go three spaces up here to get the other side of the u, or the c rather. So there is your parabola, 3 comma 0, and then 3 comma 6 is the two additional points that we put onto the graph. So again, everything that we did right here is just prior knowledge. Again, the only thing new today is the completing the square part. If 1.3, so really close to each vertice. And there's your ellipse. Now we'll do an example of completing the square for the hyperbola. Remember the hyperbola equation has a subtraction sign in between. Let's try the hyperbola. Notice again it's got an x squared and a y squared. Notice this time one of the squared variables has a negative sign in front. So that should be a clue that chances are your final answer will be a hyperbola. So only thing we need to move to the right side is the constant. Put your x's side by side. Put your y side by side. There's only a y squared. And then it equals negative 16. I'm going to begin my completing the square process. For the x's, I need to factor out a 4 first. So x squared plus 2x, leave a blank space. For the y, I'm going to do it in red. This will turn into... There's no b term, so just make it y minus 0 squared. That's what it'll factor into. There's no b. Over here, negative 16. So let's work on the blue. Take the b term, divide it by 2. Square it. 1 squared. I'm going to be adding positive 1 squared. And over here, remember, to the right side, don't forget about the 4 you factored out. Multiply it by that 1 that you're putting in there to make it a perfect square. So plus 4. I don't need to show the red, the plus 0, because that doesn't change it. So now let me factor this trinomial. It factors into 4 times x plus 1 squared. 
over here. This one's already done. Y minus zero squared. And then I need to simplify this. Negative 16 plus four is negative 12. Again, I do not want my equation equal to a number other than one, so I need to divide everything by negative 12. Now this is a little tricky. So we're doing a positive four divided by negative 12. This fraction is gonna simplify into x plus one, maybe I'll do it in blue, just so we can follow where it goes. x plus one over two, or squared, um, over three. And this is negative, because you're doing a positive divided by a negative. Then for the red, negative three divided by negative 12, this is gonna become a positive four. Now, remember our equation for the um, ellipse, I mean, sorry, the hyperbola is a subtraction sign. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the places here. If one of your fractions ends up negative, write it in the second spot. So final answer here, I'm gonna be writing y minus zero squared over four, I'm taking the red, putting it here, and then I'm putting the blue here. So this negative sign here becomes the subtraction sign. And then it equals positive one. Remember for the hyperbola, it's important which fraction goes first because that's the axis it's transversing. Okay, this equation is gonna be vertical. And remember, a squared is always under the first fraction. So up to this point, this is all that was new. When you go again to key it into web assign, you don't have to put the minus zero. You're just gonna put y squared over four and then x plus one squared over three. And this is how you'll key it in web assign. So again, my hyperbola is gonna be vertical because I see the y squared first. A squared always comes first in the hyperbola. So b squared will be second. A is equal to plus and minus two. B is equal to plus and minus the square root of three. The equation to find C is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. A squared four, B squared three, C squared equals seven, C equals plus and minus the square root of seven. Let's go ahead and pull out our center our center of our hyperbola is negative one comma zero. I need to use that center to find the vertices, the covertices, and the foci. So for the vertices, we're gonna add and subtract the A value to the center and where I'm adding it is to the Y, because that's the first letter I saw. So I'm gonna add and subtract two here. So I have, all right, vertical, vertices. So I have negative one, negative two, negative one, positive two. These are my vertices. For my foci, I'm using the C value. So again, I take my center. I'm going to add and subtract the square root of 7. So negative 1 minus comma negative root 7. 
and negative 1 comma positive root 7. These are the foci. Remember the hyperbola has asymptotes. So for the asymptotes, when your equation is vertical and the center is not at the origin, we're going to use y equals k plus or minus. And here I'm going to do a over b. When it's vertical, it's a over b. If it were horizontal, we would do b over a. So the letters flip-flop. So let's fill this in. So y equals plus or minus 2 over the square root of 3. And then x minus negative 1, so it turns into a plus. This is the equation for your asymptote. Remember when we graph the hyperbolas, all we're doing is graphing the center and then using the slope. So this 2 over the square root of 3, this is really the slope. So I'm going to rise 2 and run the square root of 3. So the square root of 3 is about 1.7. So I'll go up 2 and then to the side, like a little bit more than 1.5. So let's go ahead and graph the center and let's graph the asymptotes first. So the center is at negative 1, 0. So I can put my point here. I'm now going to graph the asymptotes. So I'm going to rise 2 and then run like 1 and a half. I could also go down 2 and then 1 and a half. So this will be my first asymptote. This is the positive asymptote. Then I can also go up and over this way. And here would be another asymptote. We can now graph the vertices. Negative 1, positive 2, and negative 1, negative 2. Use the asymptotes as your guide. Goes that way and that way, and same thing here. And then we can also graph the focus. So again, the square root of seven is about 2.6. So I'll graph plus and minus 2.6. So negative one and 2.6, and then this way. And those are your focus points. So you can see here there's only one squared term. Now, you can either choose to move everything over to the right side right away. However, before I even begin, I see that my x squared term is negative. So before I even start, I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 just to get that x squared term positive, just to make the completing the square process a little bit easier. So if I divide everything by negative 1, this will become an x squared minus 10x minus y plus 21 equals 0. My next step is to move the constant to the right. And in this case, when it's a parabola, I'm also going to move that variable that wasn't tied to a square also to the other side. So I'm going to add y. Subtract the 21. x squared minus 10x equals y minus 21. I now have to complete the square. I need to fill in the blank space. So I take the b term, divide it by 2, and square it. So negative 5 squared becomes positive 25. 
So in here, I'm going to put plus negative 5 squared. Over here, I'm going to put plus 25 because that's what negative 5 squared is. I can factor this blue trinomial. It factors into x minus 5 squared. So I can also simplify the y the side, so I'm going to do negative 21 plus 25, and I get y plus 4. So now again, this is a form I recognize. I'm done with the completing the square process. I can pull my vertex out. It's my h and k, so 5, negative 4. My p-value, it's this assume 1 that's here. So 4p equals 1, divide by 4, p equals 1 fourth. To find the axis of symmetry, I'm going to use the vertex, and it's going to be x equals 5. To find my focus, I'm using the p-value, so I'm going to add p, so to find my focus, I'm using the vertex and my non-squared variable is y, so I'm going to add p to the y. So I'm going to get 5, negative 4, plus 1 fourth. So my focus point is going to be negative 3 and 3 fourths. For my directrix, I'm going to add the opposite of p. So this will become y equals negative 4 minus 1 fourth. So y equals negative 4 and 1 fourth. Again, if it needs to be entered in as an improper fraction, it would be y equals negative 17 over 4. Let me go ahead and find. It's an x squared, so I'm going to find my y-intercept. So I'm going to come back up here to the beginning. I'm going to set x equal to 0. So negative 0 squared plus 10 times 0 plus y minus 21 equals 0. This is all gone, so y minus 21 equals 0. Add 21. y equals 21. So 0 comma 21 is my y-intercept. It doesn't really help me that much for as far as making my graph because it's going to be way off. But let's see what we can get on here. So again, if I make my x and y axis, if I graph my vertex, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 4. If I graph my axis of symmetry, it's going to be this line through the vertex. You could graph your focus point. So my focus is at 5 and then negative 3 and 3 fourths. So really close to that vertex. And then the directrix is negative 4 and 1 fourth. So this would be your directrix. And again, the y-intercept, it's going to be way up here at 21. You could say maybe way up here somewhere. You can make your graph. You can use the axis of symmetry. So this is 5, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then put one the same distance away. And you could say your other half of your graph looks like that. So again, finding the graph and the focus, directrix, axis of symmetry. This is all the same things that we've already done from 4.3. So I'm going to go ahead and post these first four examples for you, and then I'll finish up and do a part two of 4.4, doing the examples 5 through 10.